It's disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC. So that's what you're going to see it as. You're going to see it as <clears throat> DIC. Okay, what, what happens here, and you're most likely going to see this on your OB, uh, PEDS um, sections in school, and you'll probably be tested about it within OB, PEDS, etc. So what happens with DIC is there's this um, systemic activation of clotting cascade, okay? So not just within one portion or where there's an injury or whatever, but there's widespread activation of the clotting cascade, and this results in little teeny tiny clots forming in our microvascular system. Now, this, what happens is we, we end up using up all of our clotting factors, okay? So normal clotting is disrupted, and then severe bleeding and hemorrhage occurs, okay? So, for example, let's say here's our hand. Let's say that's a hand. So all, you, you end up clotting you end up with these massive clotting cascade occurring in the microvascular system within the body, okay? So that happens to such an extent that your ability to clot then becomes ceased, okay? You no longer can clot, um, and because of that, massive hemorrhage occurs. Severe bleeding and massive hemorrhage occurs. So this is a huge concern, okay? The reason it can occur um, with postpartum patients is because after giving birth, you know, they lose a lot of blood, and so their clotting cascade and, and everything is uh, activated. And so they can, when trying to uh, stop that bleeding, you know, when, under normal circumstances, they can end up utilizing and um, using all of their clotting factors. Okay, so then that can lead to DIC within the postpartum patient. Now it can also happen with uh, like liver patients or patients who already have a decreased amount of clotting factors, or it can just occur as part of a uh, condition with a patient who's, who's critically ill. Okay, the uh, last patient I had who had DIC, and the problem with it is it's kind of hard to notice until really late. You just, you notice your patient's less responsive, you notice that they're bleeding a little bit more, but what can happen is these patients begin to bleed from every orifice in their body, even from minor um, needle sticks, okay? They'll just be oozing blood out of their body. So uh, <laughs> I know that's maybe a little bit graphic or whatever, but hopefully I've been graphic enough with, with how truly uh, traumatic and how dangerous this really is. That the patient, the, they're bleeding from their mouth, they're bleeding from their anus, they're bleeding from their, even from their ears and from their eyes, okay? They're just bleeding because they cannot stop blood from flowing, okay? So some of the things you're going to see, uh, obviously they're going to be pallor, okay? They've wasted all their blood, uh, so they'll, be, they'll appear very white. Um, They'll develop hematomas, hemoptysis. Uh, they'll be, you know, spewing blood. You'll notice bruising throughout their body, ecchymosis. Um, you'll notice melana, which is occult blood in the stool. This would be uh, like hematorrhea right here. Uh, dyspnea, chest pain, hematorrhea, anxiety, confusion, prolonged uh, APTT, PT, and thrombin time, and their platelets will be severely decreased, you know, down under 10,000 even, okay? Um, and their their PT, their INR is going to be incredibly elevated, okay? If you have time to even run these tests, what happens is these patients can go into DIC very quickly. Um, and if you're, you're, you're able to catch it in time, you can begin to provide uh, 